Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a Budget. Today, we've got an episode of Spare Chain. Pardon me, Mitch, but this one's mine. Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarter Millions. I, of course, am your host, Maximilian. I'll be taking over today for that pathetic budget builder, Mitch. On the Commander's Quarter Millions, we, of course, have no need for budgets. So a little while back, I took over the channel and showed off my $25,000 Sliver Queen deck. And of course, it's pretty much the most popular episode on Mitch's channel. How pathetic. But anyways, I've made some adjustments since then. At that point, I wasn't aware of any alternative arts for cards. So I took to this new art like caviar on crackers, one might say. $25,000 is absolutely nothing to a Maximillionaire such as myself. So I nearly doubled the budget of the deck. This deck now has the perfect artwork in the most expensive versions of every single card possible. In total, the deck's current price is nearly $47,000. And for those of you that are going to write comments about the thumbnail being misleading, saying it's not exactly $47,000, you're short by $9, what do the Americans say? Get off my lawn! Anyways, I'm rich, so I do what I want. I make the rules here. So my rules for this episode are simple. As an art connoisseur, I'm going to take you through my favorite pieces of art in this collection. And then I'm going to show you how much more expensive they are than the lesser version. One might say it's a way for me to flaunt my wealth over you. Anyways, let's start things off with the lovely Liliana. This beautiful piece of art is Liliana of the Dark Realms. And as you might have noticed, it is absolutely stunning. Steve Prescott masterfully uses negative space to show you the outline of Liliana the Planeswalker, in an amazing use of purple for those demonic tattoos that really stands out beautifully. This card is an exclusive one from San Diego Comic Con 2013. This masterpiece I purchased for $174.54. The generic version of the card only cost a paltry $10.77. That means that the price difference between the two is $163.77. Or in other words, more expensive than any card in Mitch's pathetic collection. Anyways, another one of the masterpieces in my collection is Verdant Catacombs. Ryan Yi did a fantastic job with the light and shadows in this piece. You can truly feel as if you are in that Verdant Catacomb reaching for the sun. This of course is the Zendikar Expedition version which is much more expensive than the generic. How much more expensive, you ask? Well, this one is $182.46. The generic version is a mere $64.38. Still too rich for Mitch's blood. Anyways, that is a price increase of $118.08. Not quite as much as Liliana, but still quite impressive for a land that is already expensive to some. But now it's time for us to move on to another Zendikar expedition with Flooded Strand. The use of color in this piece just absolutely blows me away. A wonderful reimagining from Veronique. It truly looks like a paradise. In fact, it looks very much like one of the islands that I currently already own. And no, I'm not talking about a magic land. I'm talking about real islands. I'm rich. Anyways, the use of pink in this one is simply stunning. Even a peasant like Mitch might appreciate this piece as his logo is pink too. Though his pink is... Garish, this pink stands out and is bright and beautiful. I picked up my copy of this flooded strand for $182.89. The generic version comes in at a mere $17.59. That's a difference of $165.30. That's just over the price increase of Liliana. I am truly sorry, my dear. Next up, we've got the infamous Jace the Mind Sculptor. This, of course, is the Mythic Edition version, which is the most expensive and therefore the best one. All the other peasants must deal with a border on their card. But there are no borders to hold in our Jace. Because when you have money, nothing gets in your way. Anyways, the current price of Jace the Mind Sculptor Mythic Edition is $184.69. The generic brand of Jace the Mind Sculptor is $77.85. That's a price increase for the art at $106.84, well worth every penny. A fantastic addition to my ever-growing art collection. 
But next up we have a picture of a beautiful tree with Doran the Siege Tower. And our beautiful Doran of course does not need boxes for his text. This Doran is from the Champs in States. Now I assume that's some sort of a tournament or something that you pathetic Americans compete in. Now I of course did not win that tournament, it is far below me. No, I simply purchased this tree art for $205.24. The generic Doran goes for a paltry $3.43. Even a pathetic budget builder like Mitch can afford one of those. This is our biggest price increase so far for the art at $201.81. Well worth it for this beautiful tree that appears to be walking somewhere for some reason. Perhaps he's off to buy some artwork of his own. But next up we've got another one of the lovely Zendikar expeditions with Polluted Delta. Much like this polluted card, I don't care about polluting the environment, I just care about money. But Veronique shows us again that even in pollution, there is beauty. The beautiful colors and use of light brings us into this amazing polluted environment. I bought mine for the incredibly low price of $211.87. But if you're a peasant, you might be able to afford one of the generic versions at $23.47. But because I paid $188.40 more than you did, mine is clearly better. And because of that, I'm also a better person than you are. I'm just doing my part at supporting the arts, one might say. Just a moment, we must break for tea. It is, of course, the most important meal of the day. Ah, that's the stuff. Okay, now resume. But now let's move on to Ryan's next masterpiece with Misty Rainforest. This Zendikar expedition features fantastic shades of greens and blues. Anyways, it's clearly beautiful. You can see all the waterfalls in the background and those exotic birds. I, of course, own many waterfalls and exotic birds. My favorite of which is named Charlie. And of course by that I mean that the bird's name is Charlie, not the waterfall. My favorite waterfall is named Sebastian. Anyways, this beautiful piece of art cost me $231.67. So that makes the price increase, of course, $148.04. That might seem like a lot for you, but of course that is mere pocket change for me. Another Zendikar expedition comes up next with Scalding Tarn. Ryan's at it again with beautiful artwork, capturing the look of one of my many spas. I, of course, spend many weeks at my spas being pampered because you know what? I am worth it. Anyways, in terms of worth, this Scalding Tarn is worth $258.95. But if you're a peasant, I guess you can get the generic version for $66 instead. Just know that your version is far inferior to mine. Because mine is worth $192.95 more, so therefore it is better. Anyways, moving away from the expeditions, it's time for us to move on to Mana Crit. This is a card well known in the Commander format for being incredibly expensive. And that's just the generic version. This is the Kaladesh Invention version, which is far more expensive. The artist Vulcan actually used one of my many vaults as inspiration. And of course, it is quite inspiring to see. So inspiring, in fact, that when I bought this card, it was $305.52. The generic version will still cost you $145.29. So have fun with your soul rings, peasant, you're clearly not even affording one of these. Anyways, the price increase for my much more inspiring version of Mana Crypt is $160.23. Or as one might say, a mere drop in the vault. Next up we of course have Force of Will. But this just isn't any other Force of Will, this is the Judge Gift Card 2014 Force of Will. It comes with superior artwork and just more force, one might say. I, of course, would never lower myself to be a judge. My job is far more important than that. My job, of course, is to be wealthy so that commoners such as yourself can, well, see what you are missing. Anyways, because I, of course, am not a judge, I purchased this Force of Will for $327.26. The generic Force of Will is still far too expensive for many commoners at $90.19. And mine costs $237.07 more than that one. Next up we have a land that is not an expedition with Mutavolt. The artwork on this one is much like that of Doran, the tree person. Being wealthy means that you don't need boxes in your cards. 
Like Doran, this is from Champs in States, whatever that is, but this fetches a much higher price. The cost of this Mute Vault is $499.99. The lowest version of Mute Vault only costs $15.63. This is our greatest price increase so far at $484.36. You know you have money when you can spend that much on an art upgrade without blinking an eye. Thank you for all your hard work on this one, Frederick. And last but certainly not least, we've got Survival of the Fittest. A fitting name for the most expensive of the cards from today. This was a judge gift card from all the way back in 2009. And much like a fine wine, it aged beautifully. Well done, Shelley. Your art is beautiful. The wolf in the picture is based off of one of my many dire wolves. His name is a regal one, Sir Edward V. Anyways, Sir Edward V did a fantastic job of posing, as you can see. Well done, my boy. The price for this card comes in at $546.58. The generic survival of the fittest comes in at only $89.46. That means that the price increase was $457.12, which is nearly as much as that Mutavolt. In total, the entire art increase from the cards that I showed you today was $2,623.97. Now you might be asking yourself, why did Maximilian show me this? The answer is of course, I want you to know just how much more money than you I have. This amount of money means nothing to me, and it is well worth the art that I exchanged it for. Now before we go, I know that there are some of you that are going to comment about the Guru Lands. As I am an art collector, I only included one of each card in the deck. Looking at multiples of one card in a deck would bore me, so I only chose to include one of each of the Guru Lands. Even though including multiples of one of these would be more expensive than some other options, the art is more important to me. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode of whatever. I, I, actually, you know what? I don't really care too much because I'm rich. So comment below if you must, but I won't be reading them. And for those of you that are wondering why my studio looks so similar to Mitch's, well, it's simply to mock him and show him what he can't have because you see those lights in the background? That's real gold. Yeah, Mitch can't afford that. Mitch is a peasant. Lights. Gold. Better studio.